now we've, we've decided to split the uh, science talks into science within our galaxy, which I'm going to talk about, and then science beyond our galaxy, which Professor Steve Eels is going to talk about next. Um, and predominantly within our galaxy, the question we'll, we're trying to answer is how do stars form? Um, but first of all, why the, why the far infrared? Why are we, why are we launching this sat satellite? in the far infrared. And hopefully this little movie that I'm about to show you will, uh, will, will, will illustrate that. What you can see here is an optical, that's visible light, image of a spiral galaxy. And this is pretty much what we think our own galaxy looks like if we could go far enough away uh, and look back. And that's an optical picture. What you're going to see appear on the screen is a small, uh, what looks like a little magnifying glass and through that magnifying glass you will see the infrared picture of the galaxy. And what you suddenly notice is that when you go to the infrared, instead of just seeing the front edge, as it were, of the galaxy, you can actually see right down into the heart of the galaxy itself, right down into the guts of the galaxy. And all of these regions that you can see all the way around the spiral arms, all of these red uh, a bright red uh, and yellow dots all the way along. Those are all places where stars are forming today. Stars like the Sun, stars more massive than the Sun, um, they're all forming at this moment in time. Those are the regions we want to look at. Now why can't we see them in the optical? The reason for that is of course space isn't completely empty. It's a pretty good vacuum but it's not completely empty. The space between the stars contains a very tenuous material of gas and dust that we call the interstellar medium. Now the dust we believe is predominantly made of silicate, like sand on the beach, only the grains of dust are much smaller, much more like the size of uh, smoke particles. In fact, if you've ever tried to look across a, a, a smoky room, you can understand why it's difficult to see through in the optical. And for exactly the same reason as, as fire brigades use infrared cameras to locate uh, the heat coming from people who are trapped in uh, smoke-filled buildings, so we're using infrared cameras to detect uh, the stars that are forming behind these smoke-filled uh, galaxies. And I can show you uh, another, another view of this. This is a uh, hopefully familiar constellation of Orion with the three stars of Orion's belt. If you look up on any clear night, if you're far enough oh, away... It's not the time left for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speed up. Uh, it's, it's, it's the time left till the, till the, till till the, live, till the live feed comes through again. Ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> If you look up on, a, on any clear night, if you're far enough away from a street light, you'll see something like that. However, if your eyes were sensitive to the infrared, then when you look up on a clear night, that's actually what you would see. Far more detail, and again, all of these regions are regions where stars are in the process of forming today. Now, I should just point out, by the way, these are false colour images because our eyes aren't sensitive to the infrared, but the point of a false colour is to show you what it would look like if your eyes were sensitive to, uh, to the infrared. Uh, and the pictures I've shown you so far have really just been near infrared. If you go to the far infrared, then you see even more detail. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to zoom in on this, this little region uh, down here. Um, in, the, in the very far infrared. And once again, you can see even more detail, it's even further in. This breaks up into lots of different structures. Each one of these bright spots that you can see is going to form a star like the sun. To give you the scale, each one of these dots is actually larger than our solar system. And they're collapsing under their own weight, basically, under their own self-gravity. Uh, and they're going to form stars. This was taken from the ground through one of the very narrow windows in the very far infrared that we can use from uh, high mountain tops. Um, and, uh, but of course, most of this wavelength regime is completely blocked from the ground. And that's why we have to launch uh, a satellite. So this is another infrared image now that I'm going to just sort of scroll along. This is again a near infrared image taken of the Milky Way galaxy, our own galaxy. And what you see as we move along, again, all these bright regions 
where you can see stars are forming. But notice there are also dark regions still. In the near infrared, you still can't see everything. There are still dense parts you can't see into as we scroll our, 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 along, the, along the plane of the Milky Way. And all of these regions that you see that are bright, those are the bits that look dark when you look up on a clear night at the Milky Way. We just reached the galactic center here, the giant uh, region of activity right in the very center of our galaxy, and then it moves on past. This is the sort of project that we're going to be doing with the Herschel, only at much longer wavelength, at far infrared, to see even further and even deeper into the densest regions. And the significance of that is that the, the darkest, densest regions are also the youngest. They're the, they're the ones where star formation is literally just about to start. Now, I'll finish by just showing you one example that we've managed to do from the ground. This is the famous Horsehead Nebula. Um, on the left, you see the optical image, completely dark inside the horse. On the right, you see the very far infrared image. Again, you see the same shape of the horse's head, uh, the bright patch along the top of his head. But the, the glaring difference, of course, is this, this object right here, right in the middle of this dark patch on the, uh, on, on the, on the horse head optical image. When we wrote this paper, actually, we called it, What Did the Horse Swallow? because that's exactly what it looks like. It looks as if we've taken an x-ray of a horse's head and looked at what it had for lunch. And when we did actually look closely at this in the very far infrared, what we found is this is an object that's in the process of collapsing under its own self-gravity and about to form a star. And it's by studying objects like this that we actually will learn how stars like the sun formed. Herschel will give us thousands of these. Uh, to study and in, in so doing hopefully give us some understanding of what's going on uh, and I'll just leave the summary there for you to read for yourselves. Thank you.